Hey friends, welcome to Art with Miss Sarah. Halloween edition. This week, you're gonna have two projects to choose from. You can either do a project based on a spider, where you're going to make both the spider and his web, or you do it colorful like this one, or you could just do a plain black and white one. Your choice. You're also going to have the option to make a spooktacular haunted house. So the first thing you're going to do is on your paper, you're going to draw a small little circle like that. Behind this circle, because we're going to make spiders that look kind of three-dimensional, you want to draw a slightly bigger circle, but it's not going to be a full circle. You want it to be like it overlaps. For our spider, we're going to draw the legs coming off of this big back part, which is like their body. The big back part? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two lines that are right next to each other, like that. And then I'm going to draw lines coming out of it that are at a different angle, like that to create a leg. And then I'm gonna keep doing that and I'm gonna do four on each side. And you can switch up the angle of the legs. Okay, there. So you end up with some legs like that. All right, so once you've got these four legs on this side, then you can draw yeah. your four legs on your other I side. Have to, I, have a lot of them. I count six. You need two more, one on each side. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. six. Scientific fact spiders have eight legs, man. Eight? Eight. Legs, yes. Spiders have eight legs. Not great. Eight legs. Yeah, so you need to add. Yep. Two more. Oh, great. All right. There's my big old spider. So in this little circle that's in front, we're going to draw eight eyes. So I'm going to do like four circles right next to each other. And then right underneath that, I'm going to draw another four. And I can put in some dots. Do, do, do. Doesn't he look creepy? So now, spiders have this little thing. I don't know what it's called. I need to look it up. I meant to do that during my lunch. But they have these like little claw like hook things that come out of their mouth. Yeah, hook things. Yeah, so we're going to add those. And they're kind of similar to the legs. Like that. I think it helps them like pinch their food. So we're going to take a black crayon, Justin, and we're going to start to color in these legs. And it's okay if you go outside of your lines a little bit like that, because a lot of spiders are actually kind of hairy. So we're just playing into the fuzziness of our spiders. Okay, I'm going to do the same with his little groupers. And then I can start to color in the head and the body. So we have our spider colored in. Oh, yeah. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a center point of our web. So anywhere you want, you're gonna put a little dot. Okay. And then from that dot, you're going to make lines that come out from the center. So they're going to like radiate out from the center. And make sure that if when they come into the spider, you go behind his legs and whatnot. All right, so you should have something that looks like this. Kind of a big spot here. Yeah, that looks and good. Here. All right. 
Looking at this spider web, you can see that there are lines that radiate out from the center. These lines are then connected by more pieces of thread. Some of the threads have Ys, some of the threads line up. Some are at different angles. Take a look. So you're gonna start with your pencil and you're gonna pick a place to start drawing in your lines. And you can add in details like different angles or maybe they have webbing mm -hmm. like that and you're just gonna keep building lines that come out radiating from the center all right so i have something that looks like this so that means i want you to grab crayons markers paint whatever you want to use and we're going to put oh varying colors in all these sections, similar to what we did last week with our letters, right? So, transference of skills. Woohoo. Alright, so I'm going to take out my watercolors to do this. And here we have the finished example with varying colors throughout. So we're gonna look at a couple of houses to get inspiration. So these look complicated, but they're all made of basic shapes. Things like rectangles, squares, triangles, and trapezoids. I'm gonna help break this down for you in this next clip. The way that I like to draw a creepy house for my haunted house is first I'm gonna start off by drawing a hill because I feel like most haunted houses are like back far away from the village so I'm just started off I've got a little little hill drawn and then somewhere up here on the top of my hill I'm just gonna start by drawing a rectangle of sorts and it's not gonna be a full rectangle because obviously it's gonna meet the hill so on top, I'm going to do like a trapezoid on top. I'm just making sure that my roof goes past my triangles here. Then I might add like a little turret on top. So these are all just rectangles and trapezoids. I can make like a little fence on top of my turret. So once I have this part done, then I'm going to start adding in some windows. Little windows, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And even maybe a door. And I can do like little crossbars on my door, or not on my door, on my windows. So that I've got, and once I've got all my windows drawn in, I'm gonna grab either a crayon or a marker, colored pencil, but I'm gonna make sure that it's yellow. And I'm gonna put yellow inside those windows, like this, so that it looks like there's light coming out. Because part of what makes a haunted house or a spooky house look spooky is to look like it has lights on inside. You could also use orange if you wanted to use orange instead of yellow. And I drew my windows pretty small. Well, I drew my whole house small, but if you made a bigger house, you could add things inside your house. Like you could do like the outline of a person or a witch or a ghost. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a black crayon, marker, colored pencil, whatever you're gonna use. And then you're gonna color in your whole 
surface of your house. So that basically everything except for those windows are gonna be black. So you wanna end up with something that looks kind of like that. And the, the harder that you press with your crayons and really make this house look sort of dark like a silhouette, the better it's gonna be. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna add to my landscape here is I'm gonna add a tree, but because it's oh. fall, I'm gonna do it like it's just the branches, no leaves. So I'm gonna yeah, start, exactly. yeah, 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 so I'm gonna kind of use this side to frame my whole image. So I'm gonna start off by bringing some lines up like that. Maybe down like that. And then I'm gonna start making little branches. And I kind of do them the same way that I do arms, where it's just lines that are parallel to each other. I'm just kind of sketchy. They can be like twisty branches that get sort of gnarly and weird. Like that. It's my, it's my creepy. And like this one gets a little thick, so maybe I want to go back and make it look like it branches off into two. Okay, so then I can take my, my black crayon marker, whatever you're using, and you can color oh, yeah. in this tree and this whole hill because we're gonna make it look like there's like a creepy night sky behind all of this stuff. Technically our tree and our hill are closer to us than our haunted house. So you could also mix in, so like right now I have black going on in the tree. I could also take brown if I can find it. Nice, Miss Tati. And I can add some brown in on top because it would technically be closer to us in what's known as the foreground so it's gonna look kind of like that and then in the grassy area the hill i could add some green right now i'm it's using black green. and then i'm gonna add green on top because okay. it's a night scene it makes it creepier. Now I'm gonna add uh, some dark green on top. Okay. So there is my silhouette so far. I might even go in with a black marker on top of it. Right. That's better. <laughs> okay, so now sad. Over here somewhere by our tree, we're gonna draw a big circle behind it. So it looks like there's a big full moon because nothing's creepier than a full moon, right? So you can either freehand it or if you have, like I have a, a, a roll tape, I can put the roll tape down and trace around it to make my circle. And you don't have to do it that way, but it's just a really simple way to get a nice, clean circle. And then I can take some yellows and some oranges and some whites and fill in my moon because my moon is going to glow. Sad, are you okay? Is that orange? It's like a yellow, it's like a goldenrod. Sort of looks like turmeric, actually. Black, black moon. Whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> we can add some red. But yeah, so I'm using like this goldenrod color, yellow, and then some white. And right now I'm using white on top of the original colors that I used which is going to kind of blend the colors together. So I just added some red in there to satisfy Tati and her blood red. Uh, 
so there's my moon looking all creepy. And if we wanted to make this look super spectacular, we could add some little bats in here. Back here, I'm gonna make like not a tombstone or two. Because nothing says creepy haunted house like a tombstone. I've got some tombstones for my little cemetery over here. So to make a bet, you want it to be really little. And I'm gonna start by drawing a little shape like that. It's almost like a little tooth. And then out from that, on the sides, I'm gonna draw, hold on, I gotta look at a picture. I'm gonna draw some wings. And then I'm just gonna color those in too. Those wings are kind of extreme. Here's my little bat. Uh, three bats drawn. They're all different sizes. They're all flying in different directions. Okay, so then my last step is that I'm going to color in my, my background here, which is going to be my sky. And to do that, I'm going to use dark blue, purple, and black. I'm going to do it with watercolors, but you can use any material that you have. And the reason why I'm using purple, dark blue, and black is because even when you look at the sky, it's not really, truly black. And you don't want to go too dark with the background just because you want it to, to be different from your foreground here. Okay. When I'm doing this, I'm not really being like precious about my color. I'm just kind of slapping it in. So it's creating kind of a, a blended thing happening. Looks sort of cotton candy-y right now. And I'm making sure my black is fairly thin. Like lightly, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you're using crayons or markers, you'd want to do light. All right, there's my spooktacular. Yours is nice. Thank you. And I think since I use markers, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> So, little known fact, if you use Crayola markers, you can actually take a wet paintbrush and go over top of them. Oh, wow. And kind of blend them around. Know. Yeah. And voila, haunted house. You can pick whichever project you want. Have fun with it, and don't forget to take pictures and post them into Microsoft Teams when you're finished. Bye guys!